What's up everyone, Jeremy here. Welcome to another video in my In The Mix series, the video series dedicated to everything mixing and building a great mix. In this video, I am gonna show you the stereo imaging trick that professional mix engineers use to get those huge sounding mixes. Let's start off by taking a look at exactly what I'm talking about. To do this, we're going to be examining the stems from Vola's Creators Pack. Now, obviously I can't go and play back an entire song because of copyright issues. So what I'm gonna do is play back part of the bass guitar stem. Why the bass guitar stem? Because that's where this stereo imaging trick was most heavily applied. So here is an example of what that sounds like. As you can hear, it sounds massive, as if the audio is literally wrapping around your head. So let's go ahead and recreate this trick now and apply it to one of my recent sessions, which I already have open. So let me go ahead and play back this as is without this stereo imaging trick so you can hear what it sounds like right now. Alright, so let's start by comparing the stereo image of my bass track in this session to that of the Vola bass stem. Now, to do this, I am going to be utilizing the Adapter Audio Metric AB plugin from Plugin Alliance. I have the Vola bass stem loaded up as a reference track, and I have my bass track soloed, so I can just click this AB button and flip between my bass track and the Vola bass stem so that we can quickly hear the difference. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So you can hear immediately the massive difference when we switch to the Volo bass stem. It just gets massive, again, as if it's like wrapping the audio around your entire head. So let's go ahead and utilize the built-in stereo image display or meter in this plugin and see what this looks like. Now, the lines you're seeing in the middle here, this is the, the everything right up the middle. And the further it gets out, to, it expands out, is the things that get further out to the sides, like the sides of your mix, so the mids and the sides. And uh, the left here of the blue is my bass track, and the right with like the yellowish gold color is the Vola bass stem. Now, disregard this kind of little fuzzy nonsense in the top here. This is just because of some of the plugins that I have enabled, and because as this is kind of running, it's always sending some sort of audio source through, whereas the reference track, there's literally nothing playing until I hit playback. So uh, you can kind of disregard that for now. But let me go ahead and play this back and just watch what happens with these meters. So what do we see there? What do we notice? Well, the very first thing that sticks out is you saw on the Vola bass stem how the image just immediately just expanded way, way out to the sides. And what you'll also notice is the the, the squiggly like solid line that you're seeing now, or the, the solid line you're seeing now, um, it did get a little squiggly, but it did not expand way out to the sides. It was because that's the, the, mon like the mono mid content and then it, it's adding side content out on the sides. Whereas looking at my bass track, it's just the solid line, which just kind of squiggles a little bit and there's literally nothing going out to the sides. Now we can actually verify this by utilizing a mid side plugin and just isolating the mids and the sides. And so to do this, I'm going to use the FabFilter Pro Q3. And what we're gonna do is, okay, I've already got this on mid side. So right here, this is left and right or mids and sides. And then I can take this dial and turn it to the left to get just the mid content or to the right to get just the side content. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this back 
I'm gonna turn this dial and see if we get any side content on my bass track. And so this is my bass track, so let's play it back and see what we, see what we get. So there you go, that proves it. Obviously there is no side content coming out whatsoever. So this bass track is completely right up the middle mono. There's nothing on the sides. So it's at this point that most would likely turn to a stereo widening plugin. And in fact, that's what I did myself for a while before learning the trick I'm gonna show you in this video. And so the issue with these plugins is they use different algorithms to kind of trick your brain into thinking you're hearing a wider signal than it technically really is. And you'll see how it kind of distorts the, the middle content and kind of stretches that to the sides, which is different than actually creating side content. And so let's go ahead and pull up this Expanse 3D, which is a plugin I recently discovered, and it works really, really well on certain things. Um, so I'm gonna turn this on, and we'll, let's just see what the stereo content looks like in the Adapter Audio Metric AB here versus the Vola Stem, and see if we're getting close with this plugin. So, as you can see on the meter, it, it is creating more side content. However, it is actually expanding that mid content out to the sides, you, again, using these different algorithms. And yes, it does kind of sound like you're getting a wider signal. However, as you can clearly see by the meters, it is not actually keeping our source mid signal kind of mostly intact and then expanding and creating new side content, it's actually like almost distorting that middle signal and kind of trying to spread it out wide and do that kind of trick and to think, make you thinking it's a wider signal than it really is. So now let's go ahead and implement the actual stereo imaging trick. So the first thing we wanna do is create a new bus. And so as you can see, I'm in Logic Pro. So for me to create a new bus, I just click on the send and I click on bus and then I can select any bus on here I want. If it doesn't already exist in my session, it'll then show up and I can use the IO labels to rename it if I, if I want. And in fact, that's what I've already done. So I already have bus 13. I, rela I relabeled it to stereo width and it's this bus right over here. And so let's go ahead and walk through what is in this stereo bus and how to recreate this stereo imaging effect. And it starts with an EQ. Now, why do we have this? Well, this is actually only being applied to the middle content, the middle source of, of whatever signal is coming through. And it's being applied at 165 Hertz. And it's using a 36 de decibel octave, so it's it's not a super sharp, you know, kind of slope, but it's fairly sharp. And the purpose for this is to only allow things above that point to continue passing through this bus and then be processed with this stereo imaging. Why is that? Well, it's because I don't want those lower sub frequencies passing through this stereo imaging. I want those to stay with the source signal and, and to not be expanded because when you do that to those low sub frequencies, they lose their, their weight, their drive, their punch. It just kind of all falls apart down that low. So I'm just cutting off anything below that point to only allow anything above 165 hertz to continue passing through this bus and to be expanded. Now, the next thing is a reverb. And this is the Slate Digital Verb Suite Classics. Uh, you could potentially use any reverb. Uh, obviously, you're gonna want to be able to do some of the different things like I have on here, and we'll walk through that now. So. This is a, a convolution reverb, and the reason I like this is because it actually recreates, uh, it uses impulse responses to essentially recreate actual spaces. And so the one I'm using here is called Empty Closet. And you you may not think like, well, that that's a great reverb to use for stereo expanding, but the point is, is just to find something that has a somewhat short time, like the, the length of the reverb, because you don't want a long decay here. This is just meant to be a short thing. 
And in fact, you can see we're at uh, 210 milliseconds on the decay. Uh, the other things I want to point out is I'm just increasing the highs here just a little bit. And then we have the stereo width or the I'm sorry, the width setting all the way up. And this is what's going to help expand that entire sound and create some of that side content. Now, that's literally it. That is all it takes to, to in this bus. That's it. Just the EQ and then the reverb. Now, let's go ahead and pull up the adapter audio metric AB plugin again and turn off the Expanse 3D plugin and turn on our stereo with bus and let's see what these images, the stereo imaging looks like in this plugin now. There you go. That's it. You can see we now have a stereo imaging display and meter reading that is almost identical to that of the the Vola bass stem. So that's how easy it is to create this. Now, I want to point out how important it is to have that reverb or have the, the EQ filtering out those low frequencies from passing through this uh, the reverb and then being expanded. So I'm going to turn off that EQ and just watch what happens to these low sub frequencies now you're going to see them wobble all over the place and if you listen you'll actually hear it loses some of that weight So that right there is why it's super, super critical to leave those low sub frequencies intact and not have them pass through this stereo widening bus. Now here's the thing, this doesn't just apply to the bass. Obviously the bass is a great candidate for this because a bass is typically recorded once. It's right up the middle, it's a, it's a mono source and this helps create some side content and make the bass sound huge and massive as if it wraps around your head and it really does add a ton to an overall mix when you expand that sound like that but again it doesn't just apply to the bass and in fact i can go ahead and turn on the stereo bus that i've already added to my drums now i want to point out the level here is uh is at negative about negative nine or so, negative nine and a half. So it's not a super strong uh, um, uh, source or signal that I'm sending into this area widening. It's just a little bit to get just a subtle expansion to the overall drum sound. Now I've already got the, the drum rooms and the overheads and all of that, which are stereo sources. So I don't need a ton, but it does subtle amounts do add a good a good amount of just width to your mix without losing the punch of your drums in the drive and then i also add a little extra to the overheads here specifically on the cymbals because i heard on again the vola stems where like the the cymbals just really sounded massive and really wide so i added a bit more on the overheads here as well and i've got these pre-fader and just really pumped up because the the source signal from this is really low and then the last bit i'm sending into this bus is the guitars as well now lots of you are probably like wait 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 what reverb on metal rhythm guitars but again it's a very very subtle amount it's it's almost unnoticeable um, unless you have a really trained ear and then you're in a good listening environment, you're probably not going to hear much on the guitars, but it does, again, add a subtle expansion and just hugeness to, to the mix when you apply it across subtle amounts across all the different elements in your mix it's not a ton it doesn't sound like the entire mix is in a you know in a closet if you will um but it does help expand the overall mix and give it that huge sound like you hear on these professional mixes so let's go ahead and i've got all these turned on now and let's do an a b with this bust on and then i'll mute the bus and you can hear the difference
So that's it, everyone. It's literally that easy using just two plugins to recreate this same stereo imaging and widening trick utilized by professional engineers on major productions. So if you found this helpful and useful, do me a favor and hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel for more like this in the future. And with that, I want to thank you for watching and thank you for your support.